Hi, this is Spouse Affairs again, right at your doorsteps. Thank you for always tuning in to get more information, more tips. Remember, my channel is just a relationship channel, channel for family, channel for so you get information about how to um, live with your partner how to you know merge the kids with you everything so today i just wanted to throw in a a tip on how to you know they said there's a statistics i read that was really you know frightening it says that 60 percent 60 percent of children that are abused that are sexually abused these children 60 percent of them were abused by family members family members it is the outsiders family members while 30 percent are family friends then the other percent 10 percent just is total strangers so that means the people that you need to watch when it comes to your kids when it comes to your young ones are your family friends friends that are close to you stepfathers fathers some even mothers so these are the people that will actually strip you know why it's it's not so people don't strangers don't molest don't get a hold of our kids because they're at home unless a stranger walks in which is very rare so or maybe they pick the child up on the street which there are there are already measures that you've put in place as a parent to protect the child from dangers from outside but we forget most times to put in place measures that can protect our kids from people on the inside that is where we're really having an issue we take the time we try to protect them we try to you know make sure that outside they don't have any like maybe they're going to school you walk them to school you walk them back or you put them in a in a in a car, the car takes them to school, brings them back. And in the school there they're supposed to be protected, there's security. So I mean it's not a common, it's just ten percent that get abused sexually by these strangers. But where we always forget to watch. And that is why the predators are a lot. They are able to achieve their goal. It's from people we leave our children with. It's from people that are living with us. It's from people that are our friends. They have access to us. They come to our houses. They stay with us. They live with us. They are related to us. So you will not even expect that that kind of thing will be going on because you would think that those are the ones that will protect your children but from the statistics we are seeing here they are the ones that actually cause problem for us as parents because you open your house for someone maybe a sibling maybe a, an aunt a cousin a nephew a relative or stepfather you know only to find out that abuse is going on so how can we protect these, our children from abusers from potential abusers teach your child be open with your child tell your child I can always teach my children tell them you know, these are the parts of the body. These are private zones. These are public zones. 
it was what parts are public, what parts are private. Private parts, you name the private parts. You are the parents, you know the private parts. And call them by their names. Don't call them all these funny, funny names that people give them. Call them by their names. Teach the children. Nobody touches your vagina. Nobody touches, plays, fondles your laps. No one fondles with your breasts. No one fond, you know, teach them these things. When you teach them these things, when someone is trying to do that to them, immediately there's a, an alarm. The child raises an alarm because you, you've already taught him that these are private things. The child doesn't tell the person, no, this is my private. And then make, your, make sure that your children are free with you. They can confide with you, in you at any time that anything is going on. They are not scared of you. Most of the time, children are so scared of you. Or they are telling you something. But you, you, you tell them, get out. How can you say that my brother is doing this to you? I mean, you don't, you don't pay attention to the little, little signs. All of a sudden, the child does not want to be around this particular adult. But you keep forcing. Like, go and greet your uncle. Go and greet your auntie. Go and... and all of a sudden, the child is withdrawing. The child is crying and crying and crying. I remember once when I decided to get um, housekeepers. So I got this one and she came to live with us. And when she came in, when I was doing the interview, I was uncomfortable. But I couldn't place what was the discomfort. As parents, I was like, maybe that's my first time, so maybe I'm paranoid. So you know, let me just, you know, so she stayed with us, but I couldn't leave my child, my children with her. In fact, that night, the first night when she came, my husband had a very odd dream. My husband is a dreamer. I'm the dreamer, basically. He doesn't know, but he had a very odd dream. He was like, this girl go. And I was like, oh, please, we need someone around, you know, to help out in the house, to do some of the uh, the chores. This is not a child. This is an adult, a full-grown adult that could help out. So he was like, no, 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 no. And she, but I needed the help. So I let her stay. But I was watching her. So I had someone that could be with my kids that was uncomfortable leaving my kids with this particular person. So what I was doing was I was monitoring her watching, looking. I never leave my children with her. Never. Alone. Well, that's good for have it. <laughs> One day, I was cooking, and then the, my baby, I had an 18-month-old baby then. My fourth child was 18, 18 months old then. So I was like, okay, I'll go handle this child. Go rock this baby to sleep while I finish the cooking. So she was doing that, but I had a discomfort. I wasn't hearing any sound again, you know, the normal. The, the quietness just came to just so comfortable. Then I started hearing, you know, you know. I said, just go check her. This thing I'm telling you is just like within the space of four to five minutes. So I went in there. I tiptoed quietly, like a detective mom. <laughs> I went in there. Lo and behold. She had brought out her boobs to feed my child. Like, who does that? I screamed. And I was like, what the heck is going on? Before, prior to this one, what even brought me startled was my husband told her to take the boys. Because I don't allow her to bathe my children, my boys. I don't allow her to bathe them. I don't allow her to do any of that. So, he told her, go take them, just take them to their room. He will come and talk them in. So, she, they went to pee pee. My husband said, he just said, let him follow her. He was behind her and he saw her there, standing by where they were peeing. And she was laughing. You could see the excitement when she saw them, saw their, saw their, their penis and they were peeing. What was the excitement? And he saw her, she was laughing. Hey, 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 see your husband. Oh, I was like, ha, ah, what's this? Immediately he told me, he said, look, take this, let this girl go. This girl is strange. She's strange. 
she looks like all these molest this child pedophiles now in my only for that day for that to happen that day immediately i just said that no get your bags and get out of my house so she didn't have the opportunity to actually molest my children because i made sure that i was around her i was watching her every move i was <laughs> so imagine someone that's supposed to help you out but you are now babysitting the person because you don't want the person to hurt your child so that was basically what I was doing. But the truth is, we as parents, I should have immediately let her go the first day. The first time I noticed a discomfort or an unrest in my spirit. We already have peace of mind. But once you get disturbed in your spirit, that is the Holy Spirit trying to tell you, danger, 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 danger. This one is not. Be happiness. It's not when you, you, you when you you, you have a peace that you feel that you already have peace. It's when you have an unrest in your spirit that you should sense that there is something wrong. Something is not adding up. So that is when you should be on your toes to watch out. So teach your children. How can you help your children? Teach your children body parts. No, no, and teach them how to be fearless. In front of strangers, in front of adults. Teach them to be able to see their mind. Allow them to be able to see their mind. Teach them the, there's a thin line between seeing your mind and being rude. Teach them about being rude. Teach them about still being able to see your mind without being rude. You need to teach them all that because it will help you. Teach, accept them, be able, leave them to tell you anything that is going on. Let them tell you. Don't be too quick to lay the hammer only the you know trying to discipline because once they feel that anytime they tell you something you always scream at them or you always put them down or you always you know react negatively they will not want to tell you anything they will keep it and that keeping that is where the stranger thrives where the, the abuse thrives the abuser thrives in that because they threaten the children if you tell your mom if you tell your dad, I'll kill you, I will not give you this, I will do this, I will do that, I will do that. So let them be able to tell you, confide in you anything. I tell my children, anything you can tell me. Anything. So they tell me every little thing that is going on. Every little thing. Some of the things are not palatable, but I have to take it and then correct them. But let them be able to see you as someone that I can go to my mom or I can go to my dad and tell him anything. He won't like this one. He won't like, but I can still tell her. She can't. They should still be able to tell you some stuff. I remember growing up, the person, the keeper, husband, or nurse person that came to stay with us, every night, maybe from around 11, late in the night, around 12. All I knew is that when I, in the night I feel someone fondling my dress. And I'm always like, what is this? Why does this girl do it? Why does she do it? I'll be sleeping. It's not like I'm awake. I'm sleeping. But the fear, the fear, my, my, my heart beat will be racing. And I'll be so scared. I never told my parents. Never. They're both dead. They never knew that this was what was going on. But every night, that girl will reach for my boobs every night as a teenager. Till, thank God she didn't stay so long. Every day I prayed, God, let this girl go. Let them send this girl away. I never told them. I didn't tell them because the environment was not there to go tell my father that this uh, girl is touching my. I, they, that environment was not there. But to go tell my mother. But we were even close to my mother, but I, that, that environment wasn't there for such conversations. So I couldn't say that. So teach your children how to be open. Teach your children about sex. Let them learn it from you than learning it from the outside world or from their friends. Teach them. Let them know about these things. Let them know how to protect themselves. Let them know how to defend themselves. If you can put your children in some of these defense classes, go ahead and do it. 
Teach them defense, how to defend yourself, especially your girls. Teach your sons how not to be around people that want to rape or how want to take people around people that want to take advantage of people. Teach them how to be good men. Teach them how to be godly men. But more especially in terms of abuse, the ball is in your court to protect these children. You have a lot to play as a parent protecting your child. Because many of the people that, that want that are molesters, it, somebody was telling me a story of the daughter. The daughter was, um, this is a small girl, like three or four years old. But they normally would drop her. The parents would drop her with their neighbor, who is a lady too. And now I said, please stay with, with her while we go to work. They'll go to work. They'll come back. They'll take her and her. Well, they notice that their child suddenly so became so quiet, you know, reserved and all that. And any time they want to drop her there, she would cry and cry and cry and cry and cry. She said, the, the father couldn't understand what the issue was. So the mother, I, I don't know how, she said she was giving her a bath. And then she tried to wash her vagina and there was pain. And she was like, is this, how can you have pain there? What's going on here? And she checked. And she screamed. They took her to the hospital. They went to examine her. They said something. They didn't ask the child. The child said, that lady they've been dropping her with puts things in her, in her, in her vagina. Puts her finger there. Puts all kinds of things in there. This is somebody. A fellow girl. So it's not about the sex. Okay, he's a boy. So my son can stay with the boy. No. He's a girl. So my girl can stay with the girl. No. Time has passed. For all that the girls i told you how the lady the, the 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 housekeeper was molesting me right there in my father's house and the mistake my parents made was we were sleeping on the same bed don't allow your keepers and all these people to sleep on the same bed with your kids no 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 let them have their own bed in fact if possible let them have their own room let them have where they are don't mix your children. Don't, don't do that. Protect your children. Protect them. The ball is in your courts. Protect them from predators, from evil people. Protect them. You can do it. Be involved. They go to school. They come back. They are quiet. What's going on in your class? Ask about the teacher. Ask questions. Be inquisitive. Don't be quiet. Be involved in what is going on in their lives. It may just be that the teacher is abusing them or molesting them you can never tell so ask questions be more in their lives don't just think that okay they go to school so they are protected they, 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 you don't know you don't know what's going on this world is very wicked i tell people everybody is a suspect when it comes to my children you can, uh, mm -mm. don't carry my son on your laps don't carry my daughter on your laps please leave them they are old enough to sit on their own. Then when they are good, they are no more babies. So protect them. A man will carry a daughter put on his, 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 his penis. And he's having a hard on. And your daughter is sitting there and there. Look, there's, there's just wickedness everywhere. The daughter is, she doesn't need to be carried. Let her sit down. Teach your daughters. Don't allow people to carry you. Don't allow people to touch you. Teach your sons. Teach them. Most of the time, we as parents, we get so busy that we forget to teach the children that God has given to us. So protect these children. Talk to them. Counsel them. Guide them. Lead them. And God will see us all through. So thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you. I hope that all these tips that I laid out so far, I hope that one helped you and one was a wake-up call on how to protect the kids. God bless you. Please subscribe, like, share, help someone. God bless you.